Yesterday at their WWDC event, Apple showed off their second generation of Apple Silicon with the M2. Now the M1 was very well received, offering PC desktop levels of performance, but at a much lower power draw. So will Apple be able to live up to the hype with M2? First we'll have a look at the specs and then, like I did with M1, have a look at Apple's infamous performance graphs. Starting off with the foundations, M2 is built on the second generation 5nm process, presumably from TSMC like M1 was, and it now offers 25% more transistors, coming in at a whopping 20 billion. And it's also physically bigger than M1, if Apple's images are to be believed around 130 to 140 square millimeters. However, it is still dwarfed by the enormous M1 Max and M1 Ultra chips. Onto the CPU, the M2 also has the 4 performance and 4 efficiency core setup like we saw with M1. But now the performance cores get 4 MB more of shared cache to a total of 16. And we of course have the updated architecture. Now let's have a closer look at Apple's graphs. Here showing CPU performance versus power. And here I've annotated it a bit. This is actually multi-core CPU performance, as he says in the video. And this was also using select industry standard benchmarks, but I have good reason to believe this is actually Geekbench 5, but I'll explain why in a different video. Make sure to be subscribed for that. In any case, here we can see that M2 offers an 18% boost over M1 in terms of their multi-core CPU performance. Interestingly, at the same power level, so we're getting the benefits of the new architecture and perhaps a bit of extra frequency from the new process node. Next up they compared it to a 10 core PC laptop chip and here it gets interesting because in the fine print we can see that this is actually a Samsung Galaxy Book S2 powered by a Alder Lake i7 1255U with 2 P cores and 8 E cores. Now there aren't many benchmarks known for this particular chip, but what is known is Geekbench 5. Here we have 7202 for the 1255U. Now knowing that this 10-core PC laptop chip is 20% faster in multi-core performance compared to M2, we can calculate quite easily and give an estimation of what the M2's Geekbench 5 multi-thread score will be. In this case, around 8642 points. And we can actually do this same thing for uh, M2 compared to M1, as M1 scores for Geekbench 5 are all over the place. 7733 here. Do that times 1.18 and we get a score of 9124. Fairly close if we combine all of that to the other scores. And here we can see what this would equate to when compared to desktop PC chips. Here we have M1. And here we can see that the scores will be around the level of the desktop AMD Ryzen 5 600X to between around a um, i9-9900K, an 8-core chip from a little while ago from Intel. There's still some way out compared to the M1 Max chip, which has 8 performance and 2 efficiency cores. And of course to the more powerful Ryzen 9 5950X, but still strong scores considering this is going in a small and light uh, laptop. To further drive home the point, Apple here also compared it to a 12-core PC laptop chip saying that M2 gives 87% of the multi-core CPU performance at 14 watt compared to 52 watt. Read the fine print and here we can see this was with an MSI Prestige 14 EVO with a slightly faster Alder Lake i7. In this case a 1260p with 4 performance and 8 efficient cores. Notebook check did a review of this uh, CPU and here it got a score of 10,321. Do that times 0 0.87 and we get 8,979 which if we add it to the graph is really close to the other scores. So overall I am fairly confident about what the Geekbench 5 multi-thread performance of M2 will be. In terms of memory there are also some big improvements. Even now the entry M2 gets LPDDR5 memory up from LPDDR4X on M1. Presumably LPDDR5-6400, like we saw with the M1 Pro Max and Ultra chips. It's still over a 1 to 8 bit bus, but it now gets a healthy boost to a 100 gigabyte a second bandwidth. And capacity is also up to a max of 24 gigabyte over 16 with M1. 
and what will benefit greatly from this faster memory is the GPU, and there are also some changes here. First of all, we now get an up to 10 core GPU on M2 compared to a max of 8 on M1, and the GPU now also gets more L2 cache memory. If we compare Apple's numbers to M1, we can see there are some reasonable changes. We get now 28% more teraflops compared to M1, but compared to M1 we also get 25% more cores. So it will remain to be seen what kind of actual improvements we get and what is down to, say, differences in the architecture and not just extra cores. For the GPU, Apple also showed some performance figures. Here showing GPU performance, unspecified, versus power. And here we can see that at the same power draw of M1 at max, 12 watts, the M2 is 25% faster. And at the M2's max power draw of 15 watts, so the entire new SoC with its two extra GPU cores draws 3 watts of extra power on the GPU load, is now 35% faster compared to M1. Now we don't really know much about Apple's GPU performance figures, but if we take GFX Bench 5.0, which is known to be sort of very scalable on Apple hardware, we can see that we would estimate around a 275 FPS comparing M1's figures. So that would place it between around a GTX 1650 to a 1660 Ti, here as per Anantex uh, benchmarks. And finally, we have some updates to the media engine. We now get 8K H.264 support and better ProRes encode and decode, but that was already very fast to begin with. So that rounds off the initial M2 analysis for now. So far it seems that M2 will be far more of an incremental upgrade, rather than the smash into the market Apple had with M1, but that doesn't mean that M2 is bad, as still as is M1 is still a mightily impressive chip, and with M2 Apple is still likely to achieve a power performance level that AMD and Intel can only dream of. So yeah, that was all for now, and I hope you have enjoyed this quick little analysis video on M2. If you did, a like would be very much appreciated. And why not subscribe to the Fully Buffered channel? Well, that's all for now, and bye-bye.